In this video, we're going to unbox this LG 32EP950 OLED monitor. I believe it is the world's first 32-inch UHD OLED monitor. And the box is actually more better than a piece of haddock in my local chippy. So I hope the content survived whatever journey it had to make from wherever it came from. I mean, after all, DHL felt confident enough to put really prominent branded sticky tape on the package to show that they handle it so let's hope that you know they handle it well let's unbox this monitor then and if i can just try to slice open the package So this is the crescent stand, which is quite light, if you ask me. And an accessory box. Inside you can find some cables. Really heavy power brick adapter more power cables, cable ties, thunderbolt and also display port cables. So let's put this aside and then have a look at the monitor itself. And this is the column for the stand. And this will be the monitor itself. Believe that it is facing down. Really, really light. And really, really thin. Obviously, I can feel it without seeing it. That's why I do best. And then I can try and get this out of the way lo and behold the world's first 32 inch OLED monitor, which by the way uses a true RGB subpixel structure. So I think this is probably the biggest RGB OLED panel I've seen, you know, since the Samsung S9C OLED TV, and that one was only 1080p resolution. This is a UHD 3840 x 2160 resolution. So I think, you know, what we will do is to try to assemble it somehow. You can see how thin it is. So let's leave this aside for now. And then let's assemble the stand. By the way, where are the screws? Didn't see the screws anywhere. Right, so really nifty. You don't even need a screwdriver. You can just screw the column into the crescent base. 
right and then So there you go, the EP950. Let's power this thing up and see what we get. So I've finished setting up this LG EP950 and we're gonna go into the picture menu and see what settings are available. Picture mode will allow you to select different picture presets ranging from BT2020, BT709, P3, and you can even force an HDR10 PQ curve. So for example, I've engaged it here, which is obviously wrong for this particular video source because it is in SDR. But this goes to show that you can just force an HDR10 PQ curve. Let's go back to custom. Brightness will allow you to set the light output from this OLED display. It is similar to the OLED light control on LG OLED TVs. So if you go down in terms of the value, then you'll be darkening the picture. Let's go back to the default value of 100. Contrast will allow you to set the digital white level. If we go up too high, then we may be clipping some whiter than white detail. But if we go down by too much, then you may be losing dynamic range. So let's go back to the default value of 70. Gamma EOTF allows you to choose various transfer functions. So you can go for a brighter gamma of say 2.0 or even 1.8 for consumption in a bright room. Or you can even force a PQ curve but that is not desirable, obviously, for SDR content because it deviates from the creative intent. So let's go back up to Gamma 2.2. And then Color Gamut will let you choose what color space you want to operate in. BT709 is the HDTV color space standard. BT2020 is the UHD TV standard, P3, Adobe RGB, and also sRGB for photoshopping. Let's go back to the panel native color gamut. And then with color temperature, you can choose to adjust your color temperature in 500 Kelvin increments. So let's say if you go up, then the picture will become bluer. But if you go down, then the picture will become warmer. And 6500 Kelvin is the standard that is used within the film and broadcast industry. And if you select custom, then what this will do is to allow you to adjust the red channel, the green channel, and also the blue channel for your grayscale. So I would say that this is a single point white balance control but I think LG Electronics is also allowing users to use 3D LUT to get even more accurate colors and I think the softwares that are supported are Kalman and also LG's own calibration software which will be available at a later date. 
Next, we go into the second page where we can find hue adjustment to rotate the color wheel so that all the colors will change in terms of the tint. Saturation will increase or decrease the saturation of all the colors. Now you can obviously make the colors more saturated but it is not necessarily more accurate. So we will need to do some measurements here and if you go down by too much then you'll be desaturating the picture. Six color is LG's color management system or CMS on this EP950 OLED monitor and you can adjust the three primary colors of red, green and blue and the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta and yellow and for each color you can adjust the hue and saturation but not luminance so this is not as advanced as the HSL color management system found on many other displays including LG's own OLED TVs but in all honesty because of the 3D LUT capabilities I don't see this as a big loss at all because you know you can always use Kalman or LG's own calibration software to upload a 3D LUT for even more accurate results Next, let's go into the general submenu. ABL indicator is quite interesting because this is obviously an OLED monitor and it is subject to ABL or automatic brightness limiter. What this means is that when the picture gets too bright or exceeds a certain brightness threshold, then the ABL circuitry will kick in. What this means is that the picture will become dimmer on screen. An ABL indicator, all it is, is an LED light at the bottom right corner of the monitor and you can just change how bright you want this LED indicator light to be or you can even switch it off altogether. So let's go back to the default value of 3. HDMI Ultra HD Deep Color, this is similar to that found on LG OLED TVs and this will allow you to choose between HDMI 2.0 and also HDMI 1.4 for compatibility reasons with legacy devices. And then screen saver and screen shift are precautionary measures for this OLED display. I mean OLEDs use organic material so they are susceptible to burn in and also image retention so screensaver presumably will activate a screensaver when an image on screen is paused for too long and screen shift will just move the picture slowly gradually one pixel or a couple of pixels to reduce the risk of image retention and also permanent screen burn volume this monitor is equipped with a headphone jack and i think the volume will just let you set the volume Power LED, you can turn it on or off. Automatic standby. Presumably, you know, when there's no picture on screen, it will just switch off. Hotkey setting, information reset to initial settings. Okay, that concludes my walkthrough of the picture settings available on this LG EP950 OLED monitor. I'm quite excited about this display because this is the largest RGB OLED that I've had in my hand since the Samsung 1080p S9C RGB OLED TV probably 8 years ago. So I'm excited to see what this display can do. If there's anything you want me to test in particular or if you have any questions about this monitor, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube section below. If you would like to watch some of our technical monitor reviews, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it and I'll see you in the next video.